but you'll really be hoping for a curve to your on-ramp in the Zenismo. <laughs> hey crew, I've got the key, which feels awfully budget, to a 2024 Nissan Z Nismo. And today we're gonna see what it's like to live with this track-focused sports car. Starting with the spacing in my driveway, it's parked about eight inches from the edge, sitting next to a new Ford Explorer Timberline edition that my wife is reviewing, which is parked, well, it's actually hanging off the edge here. So presuming this was brought onto the driveway and this one was pushed over to the edge a little bit, you'd still have all this space to walk between the two cars. It's actually not that big of a vehicle, even the length, it's not even at the edge before the gutter of my driveway and still, there's all this margin behind it. I could easily walk between this hedge and the car to pass along my sidewalk here. As I go to enter the car with the key fob on me, I'm just gonna hit this button to unlock the doors. And with all this space between the cars, I can go two, not quite three notches of the door, which is plenty of room for me to gracefully, well, kind of gracefully, I still have to duck my head here, get inside the car. It's not that low though, so I didn't have to crouch down too much. I'm not gonna find spots for my items here. So my phone can go in there, which is not a wireless charging pad. Why not, Nissan? My large water bottle could go in these cubbies behind the front seats. I've got this console here, but it's filled with my GoPro and mics. That's not normal for people, but for me, it is. So I'll stick that here and my sunglasses can go, well, they could go maybe on my phone or just sitting next to my wallet there. And the key fob, well, that can sit there. Hey, cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this day in the life with the Nissan Z Nismo. And by living with this track focus car, I wanna see if it's actually daily drivable. I'll start by firing it up here. Listen to that twin turbo V6 come to life. Let's hear that idle from outside the car. The cold start definitely carries before it then settles down into a lower frequency idle. This is not going to be too upsetting for neighbors. The start, the cold start could rattle some feathers, I suppose. Ruffle some feathers, rattle some feathers. I don't know, who are you rattling? Who are you ruffling? Who's to say? And now that I'm inside and I've got my seat belts on and my drive mode is in standard, I'm going to initiate the defrosters here just because got a little bit of frost in the front and back glass. Then I'm gonna push down on the mechanical handbrake, press in and pull back on the gear selector Actually, a windshield wipe took care of everything, and I'm going to pull out of my driveway. Dipping down over that gutter. The curb ramps really help with the clearance, but I don't think it would have been an issue anyway. Now for a few small but important details when living with a car. The turn signal sound. pretty chill. That is not going to get irritating if you're sitting in a light for a long time having that just going. The turning radius. It's super tight. This car is so maneuverable. And now if I had to lay on the horn, well not lay on it, but just alert someone to something. Ooh, I wouldn't sound like a jerk. I'd be so very chipper and friendly. You made a mistake. Now as I start my commute here in the standard drive mode, I'm noting that throttle response is not overzealous, nor are the brakes too grabby. And the ride quality from this stiffened platform is certainly very bouncy. Like, I'm bouncing over things that I don't even see as imperfections in the road. I guess you could see it as a morning warm up just loosening the joints. Over harsher stuff like this. Oh boy, those grates were loud. But even big impacts like that, the dampening is sufficient to distill that, so it's not really punching me in my spine. These Recaro Sport Buckets, 
here on the Nismo model are sort of a one size fits all deal. Like I can't adjust the side bolsters. So if you've got a body type that's on the wider side, then you may want to test fit because even for me, they're, they're squeezing me, but not in a painful way. And the padding is really nice and solid. Could deal with these for maybe max up to an hour before I'd start to get like, let me out of here. They do have lumbar, at least on the driver's side. And visibility out the front, no issues there. Side windows are nice and large. Bit of a blind spot here and this, this headrest is blocking that small side window back there. But the view at the back is not bad out this rear view mirror. And there is blind spot monitoring to help me out. Directing the Z Nismo down the road is, is a cinch. And this is a small thing but it may add up over time. The suede wrapping at nine and three is like a hand massage to start your day. So very gentle. And though you don't have heating of the steering wheel, suede is so much better to grab onto on a cold morning than leather. Of course, you'd have to decide for yourself whether a bouncy ride is something you could tolerate day in and day out. And you know, depends on your roads and their condition. But for me, I could live with this. May not enjoy it every morning, but I can deal with it. As I prepare now to join the highway for the next leg of my commute, I'm gonna move the drive selection into Sport Plus and see about the passing power. <laughs> well, we're already matching the speed of traffic and for quick lane change situations, you can make your way into a gap No problem at all, but you'll really be hoping for a curve to your on-ramp in the Zenismo. <laughs> because it's way better than just a straight line. <laughs> that could become a problem. Okay, but I'm gonna settle back down now. Move it into sport and just listen for how loud it is inside this car at these highway speeds. It definitely feels like depending on the road surface, it's either gonna be not much tire noise or a lot of it. The wind noise is not an issue at all. The exhaust is not droning. This is pretty good for a sports car. <sighs> and when traffic rears its ugly head, I do have an adaptive cruise control system with an adjusting following distance that does help reduce some fatigue. If I'm going to be in a commute for a long time in traffic, I want to not have to go gas brake, gas brake in the stop and go situations. What I don't have is a lane keep assist. All you get in the Z is a lane departure warning system, which it's just gonna beep at me. It's not really gonna do anything about the deviation. If I'm gonna be sitting for a long time with the sun beating on the side of my face, I can use the sun visor, which doesn't slide, but it does have this extension piece, which works better than you might think. All right, I survived another day of traffic, made it into the office, and now I just have, oh. The speed bump does hurt here, and I just have to park it. There's my work rival, Bob. This BMW M340i. Sold out to the family with a four-door, I see, Bob. Could have had the two-door Z Nismo. I'm gonna park right next to him, show him what he's missing out on. Here's my backup camera, which is honestly pretty low resolution. I've got trajectory lines. No bird's eye view, though. Thankfully, it's still very easy to get into parking spaces. This car is so maneuverable. And we'll pause it right there. Parking sensors do help. Up comes the e-brake, and now it's off to work. Yeah, I can just about feel Bob's jealousy when he comes out of the office on his lunch break and sees that instead of that. See you later, buddy. Huh, never would have pegged Harold for a mohawk guy, but sure enough, dude came in, sat down, and you could see his hair over the cubicle walls. Purple tips was an interesting choice. Not sure I would agree with that one. I'm gonna try not to think about that when I'm eating lunch. And what am I going to have for lunch? 
Obviously it has to be something fast. I'm driving a Z Nismo, but also something with a bit of flavor to it, like the red accents in this interior. Fast casual, flavor. I'm craving a Mediterranean bowl from Cava. Jeez, that place was packed. The line took me like 25 minutes. Now at least I got my bowl and I'm gonna have to eat it on the go here. So is the Z Nismo conducive to consumption in motion? Well, let's see, a little bit of knee action. Okay, okay. And now if I need to put it down somewhere, that is a little precarious. Maybe, oh, that's pretty secure. Okay, we can do it in this car. Uh, I ate that way too fast, and now I'm gonna have a food coma. But I'm gonna process that food coma before I go back into the office. And while I'm processing it, might as well talk you through some of the highs and lows of this interior as I've experienced it. Starting with the feeling of space. Doesn't feel claustrophobic in here, unlike the Toyota Supra, where you feel like you just can't spread your shoulders. This is fine. Enough room for myself and my fellow passenger to breathe. I like the gauge cluster and the different views that you can choose from, including this sport one with the tack right in the center and some performance data on the sides, along with the shift light indicator. That's cool. And uh, I like the dials up on the dash, the boost pressure, the turbo speed, and the voltmeter. Not that I'm actually going to use them daily, but it's just a bit of nostalgia and I like seeing those in my peripheral while driving. And speaking of peripherals while driving, I'm not so distracted by the infotainment system because I've got a physical volume knob and tuner and the screen itself is not all that fast or visually compelling, but it does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that kind of redeems it. Single zone of auto climate, wish there were two zones, I'll let it pass. I do think though that there should be a wireless charging pad. I already said this once, but it's worth repeating. Just put induction charging there. You've got the perfect phone slot. Just make it charge the phone at the same time. At least you've got two USB ports, not just one. Some of the interior bits are on the cheaper side. I like that you can slide the armrest forward and backward and that that actually is padded. Mentioned the storage space is adequate. The only other small niggle that I have with this interior is that I think there should be power folding door mirrors for $68,000 as tested. Uh, for one, it's just nice to have those tuck-ins so you're not being sideswiped, but this is a, a small personal thing. It helps me know the car is actually locked, right? So when I leave the car, yeah, you can hear the honk go, but if I ever like question it or look back and the doors are fold, the door mirrors are folded in, I know the car is locked. Here, I just have to click the lock button once more. And one final question mark about this cabin, relating to the seats, which are manually adjusting, typically I have no problems with that because it's usually faster than power adjustments, unless the seats are designed like this with hand cranks for everything, including the seat back angle, which should just be a lever you pull to quickly move it forward or backward. Instead, you have to cram your hand in here when you're sitting in the seat with the door closed to move it, or you get out and you do it with Two hands, just doesn't seem well thought out. Thankfully, the exterior of the Nismo Z is nothing but praiseworthy. It looks so cool, cooler to me than the standard Z car and apparently cooler to everyone else because I get so much attention in this car. People giving me thumbs up and hand waves and I share their excitement. And now that the food coma is worn off, I've got to get back to work. Made it to the weekend. And before I have to go run errands, like take a trip to Costco, I'm gonna take the Zenismo out for some exercise. During the week, I hardly have the opportunity to dabble in the Zenismo's performance outside of a freeway on-ramp. But here on the weekend, I've got the time to take it to a place where I can stretch its legs. So I'm heading into Sport Plus and put my foot down. This is why during the week I would put up with the firm ride and tighter seats. Because now here in the right environment, I'm very thankful for those things. What a rush! <laughs> just eats up these twisty roads and unleashes the 420 horsepower through the rear limited slip differential and these ultra sticky Dunlop Sport Max tires. <laughs> it is completely transformed. <laughs> yeah, these Z has gone Super Saiyan and I'm going into manual mode to use these paddles. <laughs> a 
I fully enjoy this car. The shift light indicator is so cool. This thing is so fast. I, I want to do this all day, but I really have some errands to run. Just a few more minutes. <laughs> and here we are, and now we find out whether the Z can handle a trip to Costco. Okay, shopping trip complete, and it is a full one, and then some because I'm having a party, so we've got some extra water bottles and paper products that wouldn't normally get in addition to the staples for the home. Are they all going to fit in the Z? We'll start with this lift back opening, which is so convenient for loading or unloading cargo from all sides of the back end, but it's on the shallower side, so can it handle all of my items? Okay. I think I've got it tetris in just perfectly. We're gonna clear everything underneath the lid and the loose items I put in these big cubbies behind the front seats. The only problem with this is that I wish you could pull the seat backs forward to access them more easily than having my knee on the seat to pull things in or put things in or take them out. Moment of truth here. We got it. Oh yeah, the eggs. What are we doing with these? Um, they're not going to fit in the cubbies. I think they're just going to have to go on the passenger footwell. And if I had a passenger, he'd be crushing my eggs. Practicality! We got it. Visibility. Yeah, we don't have that. Now, before I run on home with my items and before I finalize my thoughts on what it's like to live with the Nismo Z during a night drive, I'm gonna fill up this car, and since Costco is the cheapest gas in the area, might as well do it here. The EPA rates the Nismo Z at 17 MPG in the city, 24 on the highway, and 19 combined, but I've been seeing 14 combined, with, granted, a lot of city driving, but still, 14. So I wouldn't get the 312 miles on a tank, I'd see much less than that. And with current fuel prices of $4.29 for premium fuel that this vehicle requires, it's gonna cost me 70 bucks to fill it up. And let's see here, do we, no, no capless fueling. Very disappointing. It is a lovely night for a drive and a perfect setting to summarize my thoughts on what it's been like to live with the Nissan Z Nismo. And answer, once and for all, whether you could daily drive this track focused sports car. Cutting right to the chase. Yes, you can live with this car. The ride isn't overly harsh, the seats aren't too tight, and you can even see out of it for the most part. Beyond those things, it's also reasonably practical with that large lift back opening. It's also highly maneuverable with a great turning radius and dimensions that are accommodating to parking it just about anywhere. And of course, it's a lot of fun as a weekend canyon carver and it looks pretty cool. And yet, while you certainly can daily drive this car, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's easy to do so. For one, the ride, yes, isn't harsh, but it's very bouncy. So bouncy that you could become irritated by that. The seat adjustments are also just tedious, and for $68,000 as tested, it's missing certain convenience features which should be here. But remembering where the Nismo Z positions itself is critical because it falls more on the side of surprisingly livable as opposed to predictably aggravating, and that makes all the difference. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV day in the life video. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and don't forget to watch my POV drive review for much more in-depth and on-throttle driving impressions. I will see you guys again next time.